Welcome back to Down the Frame, guys. Today we are working on this service. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to install this, all the documentation that I use to install this, as well as any tips and tricks from code or tools or whatever to get this done. This is an exterior panel, and it ended up converting the main panel in my house into a sub panel. So I'll even go through that. This is a long video, there's a lot of detail. So grab a snack, salty or sweet, sit down, hit the subscribe button, Hit that like button. Without further ado, let's get down the frame. Got Sam with me today. We got some issues we gotta look into here. The first is these giant propane tanks. According to the code book, you just have to be three feet away from these or three feet away from any sort of gas source and you're pretty much in the clear. Now, Eversource has actually sent me a bunch of documentation on exactly the restrictions and parameters of where to put this and where not to. I'll actually link to all those in the section below. The first step is obviously gotta be three feet away. I made a mark right here and and that's gonna put us right at the edge. So this is gonna become our main panel. The old panel is gonna be our sub panel. Why am I doing it that way? Because that way gives us time to build out this entire thing and not interrupt service at my house. So my old service is actually on the front of my house. This is the old old meter service here. It's got flimsy cord just going right into the house here. The box is from the 60s. <laughs> I got my Xfinity box here. That's gotta get moved to. And this pipe goes all the way up and through the roof. And I don't like roof penetrations, so that's good to get rid of that. All this stuff is going to get moved to the side of the house. So the first step of installing this service is I want to use AZEC, which is a, it's just PVC trim. So that way it's never going to rot. And we're going to install that where we're going to mount the panel. And then we're going to use J-channel and cut all this vinyl siding around it. We're going to be using AZEC anywhere there's a mounting point to the building. So that way in the future, if we want to replace the vinyl siding, or paint the vinyl siding. It's not stuck behind a live electrical service. You can rip it all out and not touch the electrical service at all. We got to take down the vinyl siding, mount the AZEC. That's going to give us our foundation for the service. Before we get started, I want to go over some of the paperwork you need to do to do this in New Hampshire. If you're a New Hampshire resident, you can actually do your own electrical service without a master electrician. If you live in any other state, most states probably require you to have a master electrician hold a permit for you and do the work. Now, the first step that I took was to contact Eversource, ask them to get me any sort of documentation that outlines their restrictions when doing this. Eversource in New Hampshire owns from the weather head all the way down to the meter itself. They can even provide you with a meter if you want to. I decided to go with my own. If you decide to go with your own meter or meter socket disconnect, you need to bring it up with them and have them approve it. Once you get Eversource or your power company to get everything you need as far as information, information and approvals, approval of the location, as well as approval of the material you're using, then you need to go to your city or town hall and pull a permit. I went to town hall and was able to pull a permit and they said, hey, you're good to go. Once you get all that, you're free to start building. So that's the step we're at right now. Eventually we will have to call the city to get an electrical inspection to make sure that all the work that I did is up to code and safe. My whole plan with this is to get everything all the way up to the weather head and the wires in installed so that when I call the power company, they are just bringing their wires over and connecting it to our service. The panel that I chose is this Siemens panel. As you can see, it has the meter socket built in. And then within this, that's a 200 amp breaker in there with about 20 slots. What this panel enables us to do is eventually I'm going to have condensers out there. So an external panel enables me to be able to pipe out of this panel directly to those condensers, which is great because now I don't need to add a disconnect for the AC condenser. And we can also pipe out of this and even go to a car charger or an outlet on this side of the house, but it gives us some wiggle room. And this actually acts as my main disconnect or emergency disconnect, which is actually required by some cities for all new services. This allows emergency services to come over here, flip the breaker and know that everything inside the home is completely dead. They don't have to worry about electricity in the house. We're in New England. It sees a lot of weather. I'm fairly confident that this will be able to last just as long as a meter socket or a disconnect wheel outside. It's rated for outdoor use. Now the tricky thing when planning out the layout here, Eversource has their restrictions in which the bottom of the meter needs to be five feet off the ground level. Then as mentioned before, the panel has to be three feet away from any propane source. So what we're gonna do is hold up the panel to this five foot mark and we're gonna mark where the bottom of the panel is. We'll take that siding down and then we'll mount our AZAC and then be able to build the rest of it out. So it's gonna be like up there. 
pretty high, but. The next step is pulling off this vinyl siding. What we're gonna be using to pull off the siding is the side swiper two. You just kind of sneak this up underneath part of the vinyl siding and pop it out. Did you? Yeah. There we go. So one, two, three. One. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Done. Great, so that's our minimum. We can't go past that. So we have our five foot mark right here and our three foot mark right here. You guys, we're just planning out how many inches around the entire cabinet we want the trim to go. We'll do 18 inches. Center it on there so it'll be a little bit less than two. I think two would be good. I think two's fine, yeah. yeah. Mark another one at 18 and a quarter. Two horizontally and two vertically. Won't that make like a dead space in the center? Yeah. It's time to show you guys how to mount some AZEC. AZEC is very expensive, so what we're gonna be doing is mounting two of these horizontally, one at the bottom, one at the top, and then two vertically. There will be a gap in the middle and a couple seams, but I didn't wanna buy a four by eight sheet of AZEC, which is about double the price of this eight inch by like 12 foot piece. Also gonna use these to put our securing methods for our PVC going up. It just made more sense to get this than a whole piece of four by eight. So that's what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna mount our our first piece of trim, which is gonna be the bottom piece, and then we'll stack everything on top of that. Do you think Azac's bad to drink? Is it in your water? <laughs> <laughs> Might have to get you a new water, bud. <laughs> I'm gonna go one inch past the five foot mark. We got plenty of room to the, to the window. To the wow! We're gonna send it. So oh, that, look at that sink. Right, dude? And then just do this, like that. The hammer's kinda dirty. That's okay. You know what'll happen? Nothing. It'll wash off. <laughs> Be okay. Just one. All right, guys, so we have the AZEC up here. There's some gaps here and there, but I'm gonna, I got white outdoor caulking that we're gonna caulk all the seams with, and we'll even caulk the top down to the sides, but not caulk the bottom. So that way, if any water gets behind it, it can have a chance of draining out. Most of this is gonna be covered up by the J channel, so I'm not really worried about getting it super nice. This is literally just to keep the water off. Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Top and bottom, yeah. There you go. Yeah. What? We'll cut the <laughs> <laughs> now we might need more J channel. That's so gonna sit like that. Yeah, see, that one's the wrong way again. <laughs> much, much better. Sam's finishing up the last piece there. This is the wrong way, dude. Seams face the back of the house, never towards the front, ever. This is the wrong way. Let me take it out. Let's do it right. That's how you talk to an apprentice right there. Can you tell that I babysit all day? All right, day two. Today, we're gonna be focusing on getting the panel itself hung up. And then once we get the panel hung, we're gonna be working on building our mounting system up the house, or clips are gonna be these PVC clicks. We're using two inch pipe because that's the minimum that we need for four out aluminum. We're gonna have three wires of four out aluminum coming down and we're gonna place one three feet from the top of the meter box and then the next one is gonna probably be four feet or five feet depending on. Some people don't know how to use these panels but uh, I actually bought this panel used and they bent the clips but in order to get this panel off these clips right here you need to loosen the clips and then they'll spin away from that. Just take your uh, nut driver loosen that up Spin those clips away, and then this panel should just slide right out. What we're gonna end up doing here is there's four mounting points. We're gonna be using these GRK fasteners, multi-purpose screws. They're rated for outdoor use. It's got an all-weather coating on it. These ones are uh, number nine, two and a half inches long, which is enough to get through the AZAC and the plywood behind it. My plan for these is to use stainless steel washers on the inside of this, and only on the top, we're gonna use stainless steel washers on the back. So we're gonna try to get like a one or like a couple degrees of slope so that the panel's facing a little bit forward to, to shed any water and it doesn't fall back onto the building or just sit there. Perfect. Bottom and top. It's gotta come down a little bit, I can tell you that already. Two and a half. Right there. Now that we got that secure, I'll just hold it level. So I think it naturally has a forward slope. So it naturally has a forward slope already. We're not gonna add any washers to it. Ow, yeah. That was sharp.
The next step is to probably put a laser mark below three feet within three feet of this. And then that's where we're gonna mount our AZAC. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the back panel here. And then we're gonna mount our clip to that. Before we start measuring that out, I need to install my hub, which is where the two inch PVC from the service drop is gonna go in. These hubs are specific to whatever panel or meter socket you're using. Luckily in the trade industry, uh, electrical specifically, you are almost always told exactly what parts are allowed to be on what enclosures and systems. In this case, this panel actually has documentation stickered to the inside of it, which told me that this specific hub, which does not require a gasket, is going to be used for this enclosure. We're gonna put this on just so we can get a better idea of where center is. We might end up taking this off to flip it because as you can see, this hub has a part that kind of, it's not centered, the hole isn't centered in the plate. So depending on how much the clips push the PVC off, it might either be further this way or further back. So right now I'm threading in the PVC male to female adapter, which is where we're gonna glue our two inch PVC into. We also don't need any sort of sealant on that, although you can if you want to, just tighten it really good and the PVC should seal pretty tightly to the metal. What do we want three feet from? The top of this? Top of the, top, the, of the, top, of the of top of the box. Top of the box. It's every PVC is every four feet. Do one of these numbers. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard work, just so everybody knows. I know it looks comfy, but. Mm -hmm. Bye, boys. Bye, babe. <laughs> <laughs> So we got pretty lucky guys. We're actually just gonna use one 10 foot stick of schedule 40 PVC conduit and we're only gonna be using two clip, which is great. It's gonna save us a couple hours. <laughs> I hope to God we got some of that, but the mast <laughs> is up. We glued it on. Now we just gotta get wires from in that weather head down in here. Taping up the end so we can shove it through. Plenty of slack up there. Put it in here. We're not gonna torque it. We're just gonna get them landed and through the cover up there. We're gonna strip the neutral now. Five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. So we're just gonna take this one, figure out which way it wants to go, and push it up a little bit. Oh. We're just going to make sure that that stays square on there. We're just getting it tight to make it real nice and easy that these lugs can actually slide out. There we go. They sell tools to uh, strip wire like this, but they're expensive and I don't own one. That's landed. Time to get that weather head sorted out. Cover. Cover. So that's the end of day two. Yeah, we got that one. That secure point, that secure point, the pipe up, the wire in. There you go, guys. All right guys, this is day like three and I kind of did some things off camera. So did a nice caulking job, job all along the top and the sides, but left the bottom open so that any water could drain out. And as you can see, we punched our hole here. We were originally gonna come out the side here. I didn't want it because it was gonna poke out towards the propane tanks and it allowed for water to get into the casing. And I didn't like that. So instead of doing a two inch pipe, we're gonna switch to inch and a half, which does limit us as far as wire sizing and stuff like that. Like I won't be able to run four odd aluminum through an inch and a half. The minimum I would need is two inch. Now I took the bottom part of the vinyl off and I'm just trying to find exactly where I can go into the house. So we're gonna come down and in between the floor joists. So what I did was I made sure to measure about four inches up because I know that the depth of the floor joists are uh, two by eights. So that's uh, two and like seven and a couple quarters in there. So I made sure I drilled somewhere in between there. It seems like I might've punched through, but I think I'm gonna have to get in the basement in order to tell. I'm just gonna send it guys. So we're gonna be using this two inch one. The reason why I'm doing two inch is because total size of an inch and a half PVC pipe is about two inches. Success! Oh, wow. That could not have been more perfect. That is right up against a joist. Now what I need to do is put together the piping that's gonna go from here down and into the hole. One neat tip that I did 
when punching the hole is I used galvanized, cold galvanized spray paint to cover up the hole where I punch through. Anytime you do that, like drill into it or knock a knockout out, just go around it with uh, like a little Q-tip and some cold galvanized paint of some sort and put it on any of the bare metal. That way your box isn't just gonna rust out instantly. So I'm gonna be using this PVC male to female adapter. Nothing special about this lock washer. There's actually even weep holes in the bottom of this that you can knock out if you want to. Now I'm gonna take my tape measure, measure from the bottom of the enclosure to the top lip of this LB. Make sure you put the LB on the hole. So I'm getting about 19 and a quarter. We're gonna mark that on the PVC. Then we're gonna test fit this. You can see in there, it's completely flush. So we're gonna take a little bit more off to allow it to slide down more. Yeah, as you can see, hole lines up perfectly on the inside and outside. I am gonna do a piece of AZEC right at the bottom. What I'm gonna do for now is cut about three feet of this PVC, stick it onto my LB and just slide in the house and then tape it. All right, that's gonna be it for today, but it goes perfectly into the house right there. It's taped up a little bit. Nothing's glued together. So that's day three, very short day on to day four. Today, we have to get in the basement after poking through that PVC from the outside. We need to put this on it, which is a PVC changeover. It's a female to female threaded adapter where we have the SCR connector already on it. And that's gonna go to the two watt wire that's coming from our new service into where our new panel is which is right in there well old panel which is right in there I got some PVC two holes because when I drilled through it's actually right up against a joist so you need to make sure that, that the uh, connectors or the securing points sit flush to the joist aha right here I'm gonna secure the pipe with the two holes into this that way we can go outside and just push the LB onto it now technically coming through that wood is a pipe support so we only really need to do one but I would like to do two Oh yeah, that pipe is not going anywhere. Okay, so the next part would be to put AZEC trim right here. Because the LB has to be flush to the sheathing in order to be level, we can't put it on top of the AZEC. So we'll have to cut a hole big enough for the AZEC to just sit right around the outside rim of the LB. So next what I'm gonna do is open up this hole a little bit. I wanna work on some just performance details when it comes to a penetration through the house. And I'm gonna use this product that I found called the Flashmate. This is honestly going to be a redundancy layer. I'm gonna caulk around this and flare it out about an inch. Then I'm gonna come back with Tyvek tape and layer the tape up so that no water can get to the sheathing. And I'm even going to caulk the AZEC when we put it on. This stuff smells strong. Once I let this dry, I'll zip tape. Huh, keep calling it zip tape. I'll Tyvek tape over this. Go over it with the caulking if there's any residual gaps. Okay, day something. I don't know, day five? Four? Five? I don't know, one of the days. Today, we're gonna put this thing on. Now this is the, I believe that was a two and three quarter hole. Way too big. This is a two and a quarter hole. It is perfect. We're gonna mount this AZAC. It's gonna go something like this. The LB will slide into this hole so you won't even see this PVC anymore. You'll just see the LB going into this hole. Then this little panel being here is going to allow for me to mount a couple more things, such as the support for the grounding PVC pipe that has to go up into the panel, as well as an outlet and any future pipes that I want to puncture through to the wall, uh, through the wall of the house or support. I'm actually gonna go through and use the Tyvek tape, shingle up and cover up the rest of this hole. You're gonna start with the bottom and work your way to the top. That way everything's overlapped, just like siding, and it'll shed the water. Now this might seem like overkill, and you could actually go back over it with that roofing stuff to really get the seams nice and overlapped down here and around the edges, but this is gonna be enough for me because, like I said, this is redundant layer. The actual water barrier is going to be the bead of caulking we're gonna place around the top of the AZAC. So this is really just to really make sure nothing gets back there. Now these hole saw kits really like to bite into this uh, AZAC, so high speed with the drill, but low pressure. What I'm gonna do first is actually put the LB on with the AZAC hanging on the LB. I'm not gonna glue the LB. I'm gonna level it out, screw in the AZAC screws, and then pull the LB off, and I'll glue it on after the AZAC has been secured. So the AZAC's on. Now there is a bit of a gap behind it because it's not completely flush. I chose to leave this metal trim on here so that if any water hits this, it'll just shed the water off instead of peeling backwards towards the house. Stuff stinks. So the next step is to glue in the LB as well as the inch and a half conduit 
up to the panel. The trick I'm gonna do with this because both points are fixed, I'm gonna have to find a way to be able to glue and move some of the pieces. So what I'm going to do is cut the inch and a half conduit just a little bit shorter than what it needs to be. That way it can slide for just a few seconds because that PVC glue will dry quickly. Just slide it a little bit in order to get the LB onto the pipe that goes into the house. Definitely don't want to do that. A little sloppy on the execution. It is in there. It is in there for good. A little bit too much with the glue. Rather have too much than too little, I guess. Definitely on this part where it can catch rain. You can also just use clear PVC adhesive. I just had gray on hand and you know, it doesn't look horrible, but definitely not the best. I'd go with clear. So now that that's mounted, we need to work on the grounding system. Eventually I'm gonna have to hammer in two eight foot grounding rods. I'm gonna do one here and one down there. But first we need to get to the ground with our cable. So what I picked up is this MEIBB bonding bridge. Got six terminals that you can screw into for utilities and stuff like that for any sort of grounding. It's outdoor rated and it's going to come out of the bottom of the panel. Just hang out down to the where that LB is. We're going to put a support there and then the grounding wire will just come right up into the half inch PVC that's going to be coming down from that bonding terminal. And we're going to screw on one of these which is called the cord cap and this is going to seal around the copper bonding cable so that no critters get up in there. We'll be using a half inch click as well to support the pipe. So as you can see, I screwed in a PVC connector onto the terminal. I'm just gonna push together the half inch, dry fit it in there. Got our trusty level here, and I'm actually gonna put the click on as well. The nice thing about the clicks is there's actually two clicks. First click is gonna be the furthest away from the wall, and the second click is gonna bring you a little bit closer to the wall. So if it's out of plumb a little bit, we got one more click of adjustment. Oh, but I don't think we're gonna need it. So I got the knockout that we're gonna do. I'm gonna knock out that KO. That's a knock in. So the first one's usually a knock in, and the second one's a knock out. This is a concentric knockout. So there's actually two knockouts. Like I said, knock in and a knock out. You want to be careful when you're knocking those out. Usually I use a screwdriver and you can see there's two little weld points. Where there's no weld, knock it up. Right where there's no weld, knock it up and you're going to want to rock it to fatigue the metal. That way you don't knock out both knockouts and have a bigger hole than you want. Put the terminal in and then mark exactly where I need to put the click. It's about plumb right there. I got the click and the screw. I'm using a GRK screw, which is really overkill, but. They sell lock nut wrenches, but I try not to use them on camera because most of the trade guys will get upset. So now that we have all the piping done, next is the grounding system. Now, I came out earlier to test it out to see if I, how hard it would be to get this grounding rod in. Very easy. I was able to push this one through most of the way with my hand and then tap it like three feet back in. So this is actually an eight foot, five eighths thick grounding rod. In the trades, we call these acorns, but this is a grounding rod clamp. It's meant for direct burial and uh, fits up to five eighths rod, which is what we have. Then I'll be using this bare copper six gauge, 25 foot spool of wire to connect the two rods and then go up into our pipe here and then bond it to the ground and neutral bus. There is a problem though, because we're doing that out here and I'm gonna turn my panel inside into a sub panel, I will have to unbond the ground and the neutral bus in the sub panel inside. So let's try to get that last rod in. A trick here is that it can't be less than six feet apart. These are eight foot rods. Some guys in the trades like to lay the rod tip all the way to wherever the rod ends and then just stand the rod up and that's gonna be about eight feet apart. That meets code. So you can either whip out a tape measure measure to a little bit over six feet, or you can do that technique. It doesn't really matter. You just got to make sure that they are not within six feet of each other. Another thing to consider is that if you have a traditional foundation, foundation wall is going to go below the dirt, and then there's going to be a foundation footer. Don't go too close to your foundation. Foot and a half, two feet away from your foundation wall should clear you. Two feet on the safer side. That way, when you're hammering down, you don't hit foundation footer. You're not going to do damage to it, but you're not going to get through it either. I'm just using my four pound sledge right now. 
Another common misconception with grounding rods is that people think that the grounding rods are pure copper. They're not, they're not worth much, they don't cost much. And I'm gonna leave my copper rods about four inches, more like six inches above the earth. We're gonna connect everything using our clamps and wire. We'll let the inspector take a look at it, and then I'm actually gonna bury it. If the ground's real hard in your area, there's also tools you can buy that allow you to utilize a rotary hammer on the hammer setting. I mean, that'll rip through it as opposed to sitting there with a sledge all day. So I'm just sliding both the acorns over the wire, and I'll get the wire up into the panel. Just taking off the half inch pipe, untwisting it from the ground interconnect device, so that way I can get to the ground wire and push it through the interconnect. So this is that set screw that's gonna go into the interconnect and cl clamp onto the earthing wire, the ground wire, to hold it into the pipe. I'm gonna leave a little extra slack over here so that we can bury it, no problem. I'm gonna try to connect it as close to the top as possible. So as you can see, I have my solid copper connected to the grounding rod. The grounding terminal is here, and you can kind of tell that because, as you can see, there's the neutral bus bar. This is the neutral terminal strip, and then these two screws bond it together. So these are your grounds, these are your neutrals. I'm gonna keep them separate. I'm gonna do all grounds over here, all neutrals over here. We come down into this grounding terminal interface, ready to attach any sort of grounding you need it to, water mains or cable, anything like that, which eventually I will have cable hooked up to there, goes down through this half inch PVC with a half inch PVC cord grip. So when you tighten this up, it's gonna seal the bottom, make sure no critters get up in it. Then I got the acorn and I've just kind of looped this down and through, as you can see here. I'm gonna leave this slack here. I'm not gonna cut it yet until the inspector gets a look at it. That way, if anything needs to change, eventually the plan is to bury these deep into the ground. Right now, I'm gonna be working on running the SER to my sub panel. This is my sub panel. Kraus Heinz, I don't know what year old. Eventually, I'm gonna replace this. We just gotta get the SER from the outside panel. So once I do that, I blacked out, guys. I've been in the basement. So right now, what I'm doing, I've kind of decided I'm gonna have to come up here with the SER. Because if I were to come up right where those wires are there's actually rim joist right there so you can't really get a good size hole right there that's where i'm drilling my hole i'm gonna poke up with the ser loop it up and leave it right there so what i'm doing is using this inch and an eighth hole saw should be just the right size for my ser all right that's where i'm coming through right there why is it when i'm drilling all through the floor i always smack myself try snaking this all right i got a one inch spade bit so now i can go to work Fade bit, one inch is working a lot better than and faster than the hole saw. Okay, so there are my holes going all the way down here. I mean, I guess I could drill through this beam, but I don't think it's advised to do that. I will drill through that blocking down there though. All done down here. Just gotta make this wire safe and then we'll go outside and we'll land it. Now that we have the wires in, we need to land the ground and the neutral on the neutral and ground bus bars. However, you can't just do that with this panel. It only fits up to about four gauge. What we have to do is mount these lugs. These are lug extender kits, and they're gonna be specific to your panel and manufacturer. So these are Siemens neutral bar lug kits. So I'll be able to land my two watt into here. Now, the way you, that you put them in is you remove three of these screws. You pop that on, there's a screw inside of that this is the exact one that i'm using for both it's a lug kit number four to two watt comes with the lug right there that goes in to attach your wire then that screw is to attach the block to the bus bar these lug kits come with instructions you are supposed to torque them down to 40 to 50 inch pounds i'm going to be putting on this noah locks so noah locks is an antioxidant uh, it's just meant to make sure that the aluminum doesn't oxidize Is 
This is actually gonna be the last day before the inspection. So what we have to do is torque everything down in here. Gotta make sure that we use a little bit of this fire stop spray foam, just a little bit to make sure it's sealed up. And then yeah, we gotta wait for the inspector. I mean, this is just like every other spray foam. Shake it a bunch, squirt it in. That's in there, all foamed up. I did it right before it went into the house in case I need to pull this down or do anything with this. All right, so these lugs right here need to be torqued down to about 45 inch pounds. All right, so on this breaker, it says here, if you're using wires six gauge to four gauge, it's 45 inch pounds. And if you're gonna use three gauge all the way up to two watt, you're gonna do 60 inch pounds. That lug's a little messed up. You really gotta apply pressure when you're, when you're hitting these flat headed lugs. All right, so these top lugs are going to be torqued down to 250 inch pounds or 20 foot pounds. Also gonna mark the bolt with Sharpie. Just do a little line onto the lug and then onto the bolt itself. Shout out to Sean for letting me borrow his torque stuff. Right now I'm just gonna demonstrate to you guys how I keep my phases the same color and on the same side. So when you land your four aughts coming from the service, they're gonna be, in this instance, it's gonna be red on the left side and black on the right side. It's gonna go through the meter socket eventually and the meter socket's gonna connect these two pieces right here. They're gonna have two pins. That's gonna complete the circuit there. Then it's gonna come down into the main breaker here, which I flipped on so that I can test this. And then it's gonna go down left and right side of the bus bars. So to show you, I'm gonna put my multimeter on continuity mode after the meter socket because there's no continuity without it. So after the meter socket on the black side. Now, if I were to touch the left side of the bus system, which is the, the red color wire, I'm not gonna get any tone. But if I put this side of my multimeter on the right side of the panel, which is my black wire, I have continuity. When you're landing your wires on your breaker, as you can see, I have my red on the top, which is on the left side of the bus bar and then my black is on the bottom, which is on my right. So that the black from the service down in is the black all the way into my sub panel. And the red on the service is my red to my sub panel. That way I have color continuity throughout the whole system. We can now test our bonded neutral. So like I said earlier in the video, the right side is where I landed my, my ground wires. And because of there's this little patch of metal connecting the two, I should have continuity between the ground bar and the neutral bar. Good. And if I were to touch the, the ground bar and touch my grounding wire that's in the earth, I should also get continuity. I'm getting continuity. And I can even move it to the neutral bar and touch the ground rod and get tone. So these ground rods, the grounds, and the neutrals are all bonded together. Now when we go in the house and they turn on the power and shut off the power to the old service, I have to go into the sub panel and unbond grounding bar and the neutral bar because on sub panels, you do not bond the neutral and the ground bars. Those are completely separate. So the next step is to get it inspected. There's only one piece left, which is the hooks for the service wire coming over, but that's not part of our inspection. The inspector's not really gonna look at that. That's more for the the utility company, so I'm gonna get that done before they come. Today, I am adding in the anchoring points. So these are two and a quarter porcelain anchor points for the service cables, what will come from the transformer on the utility pole to my house. That's for these. I already have one installed. My approach was I used a drill bit that was big enough for the metal threads to not touch, and I drilled through the metal fascia that's right there so that I'm not trying to screw that thing through the fascia. And then I went back at it with a, a drill bit that is a little bit bigger. So this one's a, or a little bit smaller. This one's a 3 8 This one's a 15 16 And then what I'm gonna do is use this flash mate. I'm gonna squirt a little bit of the flash mate in the hole. And then I'm also going to put it all down the, the threads and then a little bit on the base plate. Spin it till it's flat and position them so that they're aiming kind of the way that the utility cables are gonna go. But I do have to get up on the roof here because my ladder's not tall enough to mount the last one. Now you need to keep that power wire right there. That's the communications. The code says, can't be within 12 inches of communication wire. I made sure to mount that two feet away from it. So the next one's gonna go right by the weather head. It's about 90, like 95 degrees out. <laughs> it's a little hot. Twist it, twist it real good. Good job. The inspector just left. 
and the service is approved. Next step is to call Eversource and schedule them to come and swap the meter over. Now, one thing I did want to address here is that I added this in, which is a Siemens whole house surge protector. Now this just snaps in like a normal breaker. It comes with a little pigtail neutral. You want to cut that down to as small as you can and tie it into your neutral bar. NEC code requires this. However, in New Hampshire, it is actually not required. It is amended that you do not have to put those in. There are a couple other things in New Hampshire that you don't have to do. I'm not going to go over those, but I did put one in on my house because I'm a gamer and I have a lot of sensitive, I guess, electronics that I like to protect. And so therefore I spent the extra money. It was pretty pricey. This one, I think was $140, but it's going to protect the house. All right, guys, that's it. It's complete. It's been running for a little bit now. The utility company obviously already came and hooked everything up. Unfortunately, it was a very hot day and they wanted to do the swap. So I had to do it in record time in order to keep the AC running for my girlfriend and my dog in the house. So I didn't get to record much of that, but I will bring you guys inside just to take a look at how I put the SER into the sub panel now and swapped the neutrals to a new ground bar in the sub panel. We'll check that out. All right guys, so as you can see, I ran the SER up, did a nice little loop down into the panel. It's landed on the breaker. The whole house is running right now. You have the lug extender kits on the, on the neutral. This is the neutral bus and that's the ground bar right there. It's all working. As you can see, all of the, the grounds are no longer on that side of the panel. It's all just the neutrals, but I did have to extend some grounds over to there. So I used a Wago. This is all temporary. Actually, all this is getting redone, torn out and the panel eventually will be, actually won't be here. It'll be different location. Stay tuned for a future video. I supported the SER with the two holes again as well to keep it up there. And I left it super long so that we can just bring it over to the new panel when the time comes. Everything's been running great though. It's been up for a week. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, congratulations. There was a lot of information in this video. It took me about a year of thinking about this. I wanna thank all of my coworkers who helped me iron out every little detail on this service. It took me about one month to complete the service, working on it on the weekends and during the weekday. I really wanted to nail all the details on this. All the documentation I use is down below. Check out our Patreon page and our merch store, also links down below. We also have a podcast, Down on the Frame podcast on Spotify. Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen. And we got a lot of cool projects coming up soon, guys. So subscribe if you're not. And we'll see you guys next time on Down to the Frame.